Hello world. Today we're going to do the 13th problem from lead code, which is the Roman to integer problem. Now this problem is labeled as easy, but uh, it has a couple of caveats that are actually making it more into the medium department. So it's one of the hardest, easiest problems that you're going to see. <laughs> that sounded funny, but from the easy problems, it's one of the hardest. All right, so today we're going to be looking at a Roman string. Uh, we all know that from school. We use the X. I, for example, to map uh, chapters from the book, so this is going to be 11. Uh, v, which is very famous, is going to be 5. And uh, V, for example, Battlefield 5. Battlefield V, right? I think it was Battlefield 5 V, something like that. So, we already, we already know what a Roman string is. Today, we're going to have a string, and we need to convert it to a normal integer. So... 11, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. Now, whenever you are in an interview, you want to ask what kind of a topic are we looking at if you have uh, some problems figuring it out. And here we have related topics, hash tables. So this can guide you that you need to do something of a, of a map from the symbols to a value. Now, whenever we want to do something like a map, we need to figure out is this going to be hard-coded or not? And by this question, we mean, am I going to change the value? So are there cases where V is not going to be 5? And in reality, no, there are no so such cases, right? We might have IV, which is going to be standing for 4, but this is not considering the fact that V is going to either add or subtract. It's just V is always going to be 5, but if you have something on the left, then we're going to subtract it. If we have something on the right, then we're going to add it. But V, no matter what, stays 5. So this gives you the freedom to actually hard code that. And that is the thing that you need, the first building stone of this problem, in order to get you on the right track. So whenever I want to do a loop and uh, traverse a string, I am going to need a couple of things. So I'm going to say testing string here, and I'm going to make this testing string empty. Uh, it's going to be empty because I'm going to be using this to add the current and the next character in order to build something. Now, why do I want to build something? Well, it's because we have a couple of points here, and we need to figure out when i is behind v. This is going to be a different number. Now, I know... Uh, that iv is 4, and I know that ix is 9, but I didn't know that you can put x before l, and that is going to be 50, and you can put x before c, and that's going to be 100. So, in order for me to build this particular string and check it into the hash table, I need to have the first character, the second one, I need to concatenate that, and then I need to check it if it is in the dictionary. So, I'm going to have testing string. I already said that I'm going to have a couple of chars, so I'm going to have first character, character, and I'm going to have uh, second, so I, I can say actually, first character, second character, character. Okay, one thing that I'm going to need is results, since I am going to be returning an int, and I'm going to return this result. And the final building stone is for you to create this dictionary. So, the way you do that is you say va dictionary, or whatever you want here, so set, is going to be equal to a new dictionary. And now we need to say we want to map string to int, because the values are going to be uh, our integers and the key is going to be a string. Now, I do have uh, characters here, but it doesn't matter. So, I already copied that because it's going to be a bit long. You can see here that I create a dictionary. I'm going to map string to ints and then I'm mapping this whole table over here. And one thing that you're going to notice is that, is that I'm also mapping iv for 4, ix for 9. So these are the symbols here, the caveats that I was talking about. cd which is going to be 400, cm that's going to be 900, XL, which is going to stand for 40, and XC, which is going to be standing for 90. You're going to see why I'm mapping them. It's just going to be a bit easier. I'm not going to make it any harder. The space complexity is still going to be O of N. 
and the time complexity is still going to be O then. All right, so with that said, let's actually iterate through the string. I'm going to say for int index equals zero, index less than s length, index plus plus. And let's do the easy part now. What I want is to take a character and then I want to check the value in the dictionary, extract the value and put it into the result. So I'm going to say first character is going to be equal to s of index. And then I'm going to say result plus equal the dictionary that we have from first character to string because we are having a car character here. Character, sorry. So if I say I, I, I here, and then I'm returning the result. This is going to run properly. Now the problem with that is if I put I X, let me just wait for it a little bit. So if I put I X, this is going to give me 11. I'm going to show you why. Probably you can figure that out by yourself actually. I'm extracting one here and then I'm appending it to the result. So result is going to be one. And then I'm extracting 10 here, X. And this is going to be plus 10. That's why it's giving us 11. Now we need to take care of this special case and this special case is if we have i, x and c. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to check if our current character equals one of these special conditions, right? So I'm going to copy this and I have three conditions to check. So I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. i is going to be x here and i is going to be c here. Now I'm checking for i, x and c because these are the only characters that can be sitting before another character. So this is where we are actually going to have a bit more work to do. And since I'm going to take the next character after this, because if I have i, I need to be sure that the next one is not i, right? So if I have i and the next one is x, then I'm going to append it and I'm going to have i x in the testing string that we created here. And this is going to be found in the dictionary, so I'm going to get the proper result. But however, if I find i and i, I'm not going to append them. I'm just going to skip this check and then I'm going to go here, result i plus 1, and then I'm going to go to the next i and see is the other letter x. If, it, if it's so, then I'm going to concatenate them to i x's and I'm going to found it find it in the dictionary here that's 9 and I'm going to add the proper result. The way I can do that is now I need to retrieve a second character so I can say second character. This is going to be equal to index plus 1. Whenever you have index plus 1 here and you have s length here you always you always need to check sorry you always need to check and be sure that it's not going to be out of the array boundaries. The way we can do that is we can check if index is less than s dot length one minus one this is going to assure that our operation is actually correct so now we have the second character and we have the ability to concatenate it to a string so testing string plus equals actually equals because plus equal is going to give you uh, an integer result so testing string is equal to testing string plus the first character plus second character. As I said, it's going to be a bit difficult here. Now, when I have something here, I probably either have ix, xl, xc, cdm, cd. If I have this, then I need to add the proper result. Now, how do I need, how do I check if I have this? Well, I can say if dictionary dot contains key our testing string. If so, if I have it, I am going to do a couple of things. So the first one is I'm going to append it to the result. Now this operation is going to be valid because I already know that I have uh, my key over here. Then I'm going to say testing string is going to be equal to an empty one because we have appended it here and in the other loop I'm going to have problems. Now I'm going to say index plus plus. I'm going to explain why and then I'm going to say continue. If, however, I don't have it, so if I have something like ii, which is completely valid and I can do it without going to the dictionary, I am going to skip the dictionary, but the testing string is also 
need uh, gonna need to be clarified. It's gonna need to be cleared. So I'm gonna say testing string equals to nothing once again here. And if I don't have any of these, I can add it to the result. No problems. And that should be it. Now, one thing that I need to explain probably here, because it's going to be a bit tricky, is why are we incrementing the index here since we are incrementing the index after the for loop? Now, keep in mind, if I have ix, or if I have the first index, the first character is going to be i, and then the second character is going to be x, now I'm going to have ix here in the testing string. I'm going to get the proper result, but in the next turn, I don't want to look at x. If I don't have the index here, I'm going to increment once, and now I'm going to take x here. But keep in mind that we already included x to the other digit, so this is going to be a bit problematic, and that's why we are incrementing two times here. So I'm incrementing once, I'm continuing, it's going to the for loop here, it says index plus plus, and then I'm incrementing a second time because we already have second uh, two letters that we included into our expression. Let me just delete the comments here, we don't need them, and I think we are ready to test the result. Let's run the code, we're then going to run with, with examples, and then we're just going to send it to the server. Okay, let's wait a little bit, we were too quick. And now, send it to the server. Now, I did it with a space complexity of ON, since I'm using the dictionary. You can do it with, uh, with mathematics only. But I think, again, you need to know about this method because it's actually quicker because the lookup to the table is always, let me just say lookup is O of 1. It's always constant because we're hashing them and it's always nice to know a bit about dictionaries. So I think this is actually a very nice method. It's a bit long. As I said, it's not one of the easiest problems. So yeah, that was it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.